Welcome to Admins.com in our lab video series on BGP. You can find a complete list of our BGP video on our website by clicking on the link above and sign up for our newsletters to receive the latest video updates. Up to this point, we know that we need a full mesh IBGP within the same AS as so BGP does not re-advertise route learn from another IBGP session. And having a full mesh requirement certainly is not very scalable in a large deployment. Fortunately, BGP has two solutions to help you make your BGP topology more manageable, and that's a route reflector, which is, seems to be a more popular approach, and another approach is the confederation. So in this video, we're just going to concentrate on the route reflector, and this is going to include the route reflector from the perspective of IBGP and eBGP, and we're also going to look at the concept of a cluster ID, which is a loop prevention mechanism when it comes to dealing with the route reflector. And the most important thing to understand the route reflector is to make sure that we have a good idea of the behavior of the route advertisement and understand how the route gets advertised between the route reflector and the route reflector client. And then we're also going to look at how to make your BGP deployment even more scalable using a route reflector hierarchy. Now for our physical lab topology, we have a full mesh point-to-point -point serial link between these two groups of router, R3, R4, and R6, as well as R1, R2, and R5. And right here in the middle that interconnects the two groups of the routers together is our VLAN 120. Okay, on the right-hand side here, we have also a VLAN 27 that connects R2 to R7. And moving down to our layer 3 topology, so overlaying our physical topology, this is our BGP sessions that we're going to be configuring. And this is completely independent from the physical topology, so you can pretty much create the IBGP session in whichever way you like. But for us here, we have R2 acting as a route reflector for R1 and R5, and we have R3 and R4 acting as a route reflectors for the client R6. And then we're going to interconnect R2, R3, and R4, which are our route reflectors, using full mesh at first, and then we're going to try to convert this into a top-level route reflector hierarchy as well. Now for our external EBGP, we have a uh, BGP session between R2 and R7. So that way we can observe how the external BGP route gets learned and then re-advertised within the AS100. And one thing that I also want to mention is within the AS100, we have a IGP, which is the protocol ISIS running. As a flat level two, as you can see, they have an area of 0100 on all these routers. And then they also have their loopback zero advertised throughout the AS100, since that's where we're going to be sourcing out IBGP session from. Okay, so we have to make sure that the loopback zero on each of these routers are reachable from any of these routers. So let's go ahead and get started with our task number one with the route reflector and IBGP. So first we need to configure BGP session between R1, R2, and R5 with R2 being a route reflector and then R1, R5 having a single session to R2. And on R2, since it's a route reflector, it has a common session to R1 and R5, we're going to use a peer template. And other BGP session has to be sourced from loopback 0, and we need to advertise loopback 10 through 12 on R1 and R5. So essentially what we're configuring just for now is this section right here between R1, R2, and R5. Okay, let's, let's start with our router R2. So first thing first, let's make sure we have our internal routing up and running. As you can see with the show ISIS neighbor. It looks like we're missing R5. Let's just saw the interface came up, so let's do that one more time. It's right here. So we got our router R5 as our ISIS neighbor as well. And if you do a ping 0 0.1, sourcing from 0 should be pingable as well as this 0 0.5. Okay, let's go ahead and do router BGP 100. Again, no synchronization, no auto summary. So best practice default command and then with the BGP router ID we're going to use the router loopback which is 0 0.2 always good to have that set as well and then we say we're going to use the peer template for the configuration towards R1 and R5 which is our route reflector client first starts with the peer session we're going to call it AS100 client and then all we need to configure here is the remote AS as well as the update source. So remote AS100 and then update source from loopback 0. Okay, now we also need to create another template for our peer policy. I'm going to use the exact same name which is AS100 client. And here this is where we define the route reflector client command. Okay, so copy and paste, and 
we're going to be using this for our neighbor R1 and R5. So that would be R1 loopback address 0 0.1. Inherit. Peer session AS100 client. And again, if you guys are not familiar with the concept of peer templates, then please check out a separate video that we have on that particular subject. Okay, so here with the peer session, and then we also need a peer policy to be inherited and then repeat the same command for the router r5 and then the policy for 0, 05. okay so as you can see when it comes to route reflector the using a peer template works out pretty well for us so that's the configuration that we need for r2 let's do a quick review so the template for peer policy peer session and then we just inherit it to r1 and r5 all right, now let's go over to R1 and do router BGP 100, no sync, no auto, BGP router ID 0 0.1. And then all we need to build is a BGP session to our route reflector, which is R2, 0 0.2, remote AS 100. And then update source loopback zero. Okay, and then we need to advertise R1 loopback 10 through 12. You can see the BGP came up already. So here we have our R1 loopback 10 through 12. Just go through a network command 00 255 So that's loopback 10. Then we have a loopback. Looks like I mistyped the mass, so let me correct that real quick. 255, so let's loop back 12. Let's loop back 11, and then loop back 10. Let's do a quick verification. Okay, so we got our three loopbacks advertised and the peer should be up. Okay, so show our PBGP. Our loopbacks are there. So that's the config that we need for R1. Now let's hop over to R5. Router BGP 100. No sync, no auto. So almost become your second nature as soon as you get under the router BGP to do those commands. And then you do BGP router ID 0 0.5, neighbor 0 0.2, remote AS 100, get update source, loop back 0, and then have to advertise R5, loop back 10 through 12, that would be 5500, mass 255, 255, 255, 0, and then 55 one zero and then five five two zero okay give it a second make sure the route gets installed to the routing table and then we can hop back onto r2 and then do show ip bgp okay so here we're seeing all of our six routes three from r1 and three from r5 okay and if we do the same thing on r1 the show ip bgp you can see that R1 has also learned the routes to R5, and this is the route that gets reflected by R2. Okay, and that's pretty much how the route reflector works. So here we have R5 advertising its loopback to R2, and then R2 being our route reflector. We advertise those route to R1. In this case, R1 is our route reflector client. As you can see, this kind of breaks the default IBGP rules where the router is not supposed to re-advertise IBGP routes. But since we have the R2 configured as a route reflector, R1 is able to successfully learn route from R5 without having a direct IBGP session. Okay, if we go back to R1 and do show IP Ceph, then one thing we also want to note here is the next top IP is actually the R5 loopback address. So if you do show IP Ceph of 5500, which is R5 loopback 10, you can see that R1 is actually point directly to R5. It, the tra traffic doesn't really get routed through R2 at all. So let's just consult the 
IGP routing table and figure out the best path to get to the next top, which is R5 loopback. In this case, since in the physical topology, R1 and R5 has a point-to-point -point link, and that's why R1 knows how to get to the R5 loopback 10 directly using that link. It doesn't get routed to R2. So the BGP topology that you have configured has nothing to do with how the routers will route traffic. The router is still going to consult the IGP routing table and select the best path from there. Okay, so if you do show IP BGP 5500, another thing that we want to note here, as far as the noticeable difference compared to what we used to, is the originator ID. So it's a new attribute that gets inserted by the route reflectors. In this case, the route is being originated by R5, and that's why it has R5 router IDs in there. And then it also inserted a cluster list. Since we're not specifying any cluster ID in the route reflector, by default, we're just going to use the route reflector router ID, which is, in this case, it's R2 loopback 0, and that's a 0 0.2. Okay, so these are the two new attributes that gets inserted into the route. All right, so from R1, if you do a quick ping to 5501, sourcing from loopback 10, you can see that is pingable. And just to prove that R1 is actually taking a direct path to R5, you can do a trace route, you can see the next top is the R5 itself without getting routed through R2. All right, so that part is done. Now let's move down to the next section, which is configuring BGP session between R3, R4, and R6, with R3 and R4 being a route reflector. And we need to configure a cluster ID of 346, and R3 has to peer with R4, and R6 has a dual BGP session to R3 and R4. That's just basically for redundancy. And we can just use the peer group for that on R6. We still want to source our BGP from loopback 0 and then advertise loopback 10 through 12 on R6. So what we're going to be configuring right now is this section on top right here with R3, R4, and R6 using peer group on R6. Okay, and the cluster ID is 346. So let's start off with our router R3. So router BGP 100, no sync, no auto. And then we go BGP router ID 172.16.0.3. And then we have to specify our BGP cluster ID for our route reflector. And we're going to look at how or why we might want a route or cluster ID configured in a little bit. For now, let's go ahead and do that. And then on our neighbor. We said that R3 needs to have a direct BGP session with R4. Remote AS100. And then update source, loopback 0. And then it needs a neighbor to R6. So change that to 6. Update source, change that to 6 as well. And then one additional command, which is the route reflector client. Okay, let's do show run. And let me kind of speed up the configuration a little bit. Bring up notepad. I'm going to go ahead and copy, copy that. Since the configuration on R3 and R4 is going to almost be identical. So here for R4 is going to be dot four, same cluster ID as a default command. Instead of our dot four, it's going to be dot three. And then exact same config for R6. Okay, so R4, copy paste, done. Now for R6, we're going to be using peer group. So let's do that with the router BGP 100. No sync, no auto, BGP router ID, 172.16.0.6. Now we're going to define a peer group name. I'm just going to call it AS100. RR for route reflector, peer group. Okay, and we could use the peer template for this, but I just want to show a variety of configuration that we can do. And remote AS100 for that peer group, and then do an update source loopback zero. Okay, specify the neighbor itself, which is R3. Put that under the peer group, and then as well as the R4, and then we need to advertise 
our six loop back 10 through 12. So we'll do a network command, 6600, mass slash 24, and 6610, and 6620. Okay, let's do a show IPVGP on this one. Looks like it's not quite there yet. Okay, there you go. Let's do a summary and make sure we got both of our BGP session to R3 and R4s currently up and running, which we do. And then we go to R3 and make sure it's learning the routes from R6, as well as the R4, then we do. Okay, so we're good to go for this uh, cluster right now.